fellow grade 11s. Today, we will look at electromagnets and the influence of magnetic fields on the environment. You may have seen an advertisement where a crane lifts a car out of traffic and wondered if that is even possible. Here we see a crane lifting old rims from the back of a truck and moving it to a scrap metal heap. It first attracts the rims, swings away, then drops them on the heap. The crane seems to be magnetic and then not magnetic. So how does this work? That is what we will find out today. The crane that you saw is called an electromagnet. It is very easy to make your own electromagnet. You will need at least one battery or cell and some insulated copper wire. Make sure that the insulation at the end of the wire is scraped off so that the wire can be connected to the battery. You will also need an iron nail. To see if the magnet works, we will use some steel paper clips. We start by winding the copper wire very tightly around the iron nail like this. Make sure that you leave enough loose wire at the beginning and the end so that you can connect it to the battery. This takes a while, so we've prepared a nail with 100 curls on it beforehand. Connect the open ends of the wire to the cell. Now current is flowing and we bring the electromagnet closer to the steel paper clips. We see the paper clips are picked up. When we open the connection, the paper clips fall off again. Now how does this work? We need to think back to what we have learned previously. When the wire is connected to a source of electricity and the circuit is closed, charge flows through the wire and the solenoid becomes a magnet. When the circuit is open, the charge stops flowing and the magnetism disappears. In other words, whenever an electric charge flows through a wire, a magnetic field develops around that wire. When the electricity stops flowing, the field disappears. There are several ways to increase the strength of an electromagnet. Let's first look at the effect of the current strength on the strength of the magnet. Now we increase the number of cells to two. Close the circuit and hold the coils close to the pile of paper clips. To ensure that this is a fair test, we have to take care that the coil is held exactly the same height from the pile of paper clips as before. Let's count how many clips are picked up. It is definitely more than before. It seems as if the strength of the magnetic field increases as the number of cells increases. Remember that the number of cells that are connected in series determines the current strength of the circuit. Now let's connect three cells in series. This forms a much stronger magnetic field. The electromagnet picks up the most paper clips. We can conclude that as the current strength increases, the magnetic strength also increases. However, it is not only the current strength that has an effect on the strength of the magnet. Kiki did some of her own experiments with the solenoid. Let's join her to see what she found. Let's investigate how we can increase the strength of the magnetic field to make a more powerful electromagnet. What variables do you think we could change? Here are some I have thought of. Increase the number of loops of wire. Use different materials for the wire to wrap around. Increase the current in the wire. Let's start by increasing the number of loops of wire to make a coil. We call this a solenoid. One way to test the effect these variables have on the magnetic field strength is to use plotting compasses. I have placed them at regular intervals from the north pole of the coil. When the magnetic field is strong, the compass further away will be affected, but when the field is weaker, only the compasses close to the coil will be affected. For this experiment, I have a solenoid made from thick copper wound around a perspex core. We can connect the current to different numbers of turns on the solenoid. We are going to connect 
to 12 turns, 24 turns, and 36 turns. Let's test to see which of these arrangements produces the strongest magnetic field. Make sure you record your observations and come to your own conclusions for each of the experiments. For the coil with 12 loops, only the compass closest to the solenoid was affected. But for the coil with 36 loops, the compass furthest away from the coil was also affected. In other words, as the number of loops in the solenoid increased, so the compass needles further away were affected. We can conclude that the magnetic field increases as the number of loops increase. Next, let's see if the type of material used in the core of the solenoid changes the strength of the magnetic field. The solenoid we have been using has air in the core. When I used this solenoid with 24 turns in my previous experiment, the first two compass needles were affected but the one furthest away was not. I will use this as my first reading. Next, I will insert a wooden rod to see if the magnetic field is affected. And now, I'll insert a soft iron rod into the core. How did the material in the core affect the magnetic field? Notice that only the solenoid with the iron core affected the compass needles further away. This means a solenoid with an iron core produces a stronger magnetic field than one with an air or wooden core. Why do you think this happens? When a rod of iron is brought near a magnet, the rod becomes a temporary magnet itself. This is exactly what happens when I place the rod inside the solenoid. The solenoid is an electromagnet and so magnetizes the iron. Now we have two magnets, the solenoid and the iron core. So overall, the strength of the electromagnet is increased. We've already seen that the current strength has an effect on the magnetic field. As we increase the number of cells, the number of paper clips that were picked up increased. So what do we need to make a very strong electromagnet? We need a solenoid with a large number of coils wrapped around a core made of soft iron or other materials with a very large current flowing through it. These days, Companies can make very large electromagnets. One of the largest was manufactured by a company called Walker Magnetics in Canada. It weighs approximately 88 tons and has approximately 270 tons of lifting capacity. That is the same as lifting up 130 taxis at the same time. I'm sure your next question is, where will it be used? This electromagnet will hang above a conveyor belt. It will pull iron and steel material from copper-bearing rocks passing beneath it on a conveyor belt. The ferromagnetic objects could be anything from workers' tools to chunks of metal pieces ripped from machinery during mining operations. Electromagnets have several other uses and practical applications. They are found in various everyday electronics and are also used for industrial purposes. They can be used in electric bells. They can be used in radio speakers and in microphones. They are also used in relays and electric motors and in dynamos. 
magnetic resonance imaging or MRI scans to see parts of the body in great detail and diagnose problems use electromagnets. The electromagnet has made many of the advances of modern age possible. But is the magnetic field formed when the current flows always so helpful? Most of us have seen overhead cables that carry electricity from where it is produced to our houses and factories. Since this involves electric charges that move, we have to assume that a magnetic field forms around these cables. Does it affect us as humans and the environment around us? And why does ESCOM not use underground cables instead? To answer these questions, we have to look at a report published by ESCOM. Their findings were that the overhead power lines are absolutely safe. According to the report, the magnetic field that forms around these cables compares to the field that forms around any household vacuum cleaner or washing machine. The research shows that there is hardly any evidence that this magnetic field holds a health risk to humans. Many people do not agree. It would be a good idea to keep up to date with the debates around magnetic fields. What about the environment? There is no evidence to show that the magnetic field has any influence on farm animals, on their milk production, or on reproduction. There is also no evidence to suggest that there is an impact on wild animals and birds. Birds do fly into cables and get severely injured, so it is important that the cables are visible. And what about plants? As you can see, the growth of plants and germination of seeds are not affected by the magnetic fields, as far as we know. The greatest impact on the environment that can be found is that they are very unsightly. So why not lay the cables underground? Unfortunately, it is up to 14 times more expensive to install these cables underground, and there are maintenance problems as well. A company in Iceland says their solution to the boring high-voltage electrical pylons is to give them human shapes on a gigantic scale, naturally. They envision these giants walking in the countryside and climbing hills and mountains while holding up their cables. That leaves us in South Africa with some interesting possibilities. With this, we come to the end of our lesson. The next time you listen to your music, think of the physics behind your loudspeakers or earphones. Good day. Until next time.